I'm really excited to introduce uh, my wonderful wife. On yesterday, I said 31 years, and uh, so she corrected me <laughs> on yesterday. I don't know how many years it's been, but I can tell you it's been some years. I think because we were in the ministry, we started in the ministry. I've been in ministry 30 I don't know, I ain't gonna try to figure it out. But anyway, I've been married a long time to this beautiful woman. Amen. Um, I say 30 plus. She says it's 29, going on 30 in August. I don't know. But if I, I got married in 1985, so you do the math. Wow. Okay. <laughs> long time ago. Amen. And let me tell you something about this extraordinary lady that you're about to experience. When I met her, she was a very private woman. I mean, very private in our affairs with people. And you that know me, my personality is an outgoing one. I talk to anyone, fellowship with anyone, don't have any restraints, limitations, or any of that to hinder me. I mean, I'm just a free spirited individual, an individual. And I love that. I love me. I think I'm a great, awesome, fantastic guy. And so, marrying this wonderful, woman I traveled as a full-time evangelist and and I was on the field and I remember going to this one particular church it was a particularly an apostolic church and for you that don't, don't know about apostolic back in the day they didn't believe in makeup they didn't believe in earrings but I'm invited to this apostolic um, church and so we get to the church and I drive up and uh, and I look over at my wife, and she got all this makeup on. And we, and we just got married, right? And so, uh, you know, I didn't use no finesse or any tact at all. I reached in the glove compartment and grab an old nasty glove and said, wipe that off your face, you know? And so she says, what do you mean? <laughs> so it was on then, OK? I mean, we, we were going in. I think I had been married six months. And I mean, we going at it in the club. We going at it, I mean, and you know, I, I'm a strong man. I ain't bagging down, you know. So, 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 I mean, here I am going at it, right? Guess what? The pastor walks to the car. Oh, my God. I rolled the window down. I said, God bless you, smile. And uh, I said, we'll be in a minute. She said, you hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> that was my experience of, of on one of those on the evangelistic field. But you're talking about an extraordinary, awesome, amazing woman of God. Uh, back in Florida, she was a part of District 6 of the Assemblies of God, and she was over 23 uh, churches there in the women's ministry, did a phenomenal job. And, and uh, with the women's ministry, she created her own ministry called God's Honorable Women, Women of Ministry, some awesome, fantastic conferences there in the, the great state of Florida. And God has just used her in such awesome, magnificent ways. I remember when she wrote the play, and I will never forget this, she wrote the identical script play to the Passion of the Christ. Uh, and Mel Gibson, um, he did a phenomenal job, got rich off the movie, and poor Berdella and I uh, went almost bankrupt <laughs> uh, financing uh, the event. But it was a great success at the Civic Center, and God really used her mightily. And she has done citywide crusades. She's an author. She's written a wonderful book, Manhattan Secret. She has opened up an acting school and put on a major production uh, called Good Seed, Bad Seed, and oh man, was it awesome. For you that want to like to see a little clip or trailer of it, you can go on my YouTube um, videos and see the clip of the movie. Uh, or the, it was awesome. It was Good Seed, Bad Seed. I mean, it was rough, but it was awesome. She wrote the entire script, and she's just a multi-talented person. She wears a lot of hats, so gifted, a licensed Claim adjusted for five states, and Charlotte's one of them. <laughs> right. Right. 
She gets up. That's a different woman. I'm telling you. She, she's not like that at home. She's very laid back, very quiet, very... She'll talk. She talks more now than she's ever. But basically, the, the Bedella Hall Walker I know is a very quiet, private person. And to see transformation in your life for God to use you like he did on last night and the night before is incredible just awesome and extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And so tonight, I want us to welcome my precious, wonderful, loving wife, Bedella Hall Walker, with a warm Freedom Worship Center of Charlotte. Let's welcome Bedella Hall Walker, a woman of God full of faith and power, full of God's anointing and wisdom and insight as she's going to deliver it tonight. Amen. Come on, y'all. Stand on your feet and honor the woman of God. unto us. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody. Eye contact with somebody. Find somebody to look at. Find somebody to look at. Eye to eye. Here's a lady over here in black and white. Look at her. Somebody. I got her. <laughs> Come on. Eye to eye. Smile. You don't have to say anything, just smile. That's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what you do when you smile at somebody. It's right? such an awesome release. But tonight, I, I asked the Lord again, Lord, what would you have me to share? Not for me, but for the people, for you, for your glory, for your favor. What would you have me to share tonight? 
and the Lord gave me his word. And I'm going to minister tonight on for the love of God. Look at someone and say, for the love of God. I've heard that said in such a derogatory manner, for the love of God, people are saying it in the wrong way, but tonight it's, it's going to be different, for the love of God, if it were not for, but for the love of God, amen. amen. Coming out of Romans 8, I just want to share a few scriptures and then I'm just going to move into what God has told me, hopefully I won't be with you too long, but in, in Romans, um, coming with the 8th chapter the 14th verse says for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god and then we go to verse 28 it says and we know that all things work together for them that love god to them who are called according to his purpose. Let's move on to verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who, who? can be against us? All right. If God be for us, who can be against us? For greater is he who is in us than he who is in this world. Amen. And let's move on to verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Yes. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. 37, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. For I am persuaded yes. that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creatures shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on and give the Lord praise. What can separate us from the love of God? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have what? Everlasting life. We should not perish for the love of God if it had not been for God on our side, where would we be today? If it had not been for the knowledge of knowing who he is, where would we be today? If it had not been for knowing that there is a God, where would we be today for the love of God? And as I was reading this, I was saying, Lord, what can separate us from your love? What can really, he's not saying that he is involved in these tribulations or distress. He's saying to you that when you are in distress, I still love you. Amen. He's saying that when you are in tribulations, I still love you. Yes. Whatever you may be involved in, it never separates me from you. I think a lot of times we've read this scripture a little uh, differently. We thought, what can separate us from the love of God? Would these things separate us from the love of God in the sense that, that they are going to come up on us and God's going to leave us? No, that, God is not saying that at all. What God is saying to you is that no matter what the trial may be, no matter what the situation may be, come on with me, no matter what the, the enemy may try to pull upon you, he says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That is one of the reasons why we're having this crusade is we have been reaching out and planting seed and sending out the tickets and telling people and calling people and letting them know about Jesus Christ. For the love of God is in this place. For the love of God is in you. For the love of God is in you. 
need to understand God has created us for his purpose. He has created us that we would worship him. He created us that we would honor him. He created us that we would give him all of our due unto him. He created us that we would be in relationship and in fellowship with him. He created us that we would know him Amen. for the love of God. Amen. We would know him in all of his nature. We would know him in his divine character. We would know him for who he is. Yes. And when we came to a place of acknowledging Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we came to a place of knowing that there was something that was going to transform in my life, just as we spoke of the woman yesterday who met him at the well. Yes. We knew yes. something was getting ready to take place, a change would take place in our lives and in our hearts and in our spirit and in our mind. We knew something was going to happen for the love of God as we begin to transform into the things that God is calling us into we begin to realize we were not the same as we were before we begin to realize that I didn't talk the same way that I talked before we begin to realize we don't see things the way we saw them before we don't watch the same television shows that we were watching before if I was going a nightclub and getting my groove on, I realize I don't do I don't do that anymore. For now, I'm grooving for Jesus Christ. I realize that the nightclub is no longer for me. I realize that things that God has for me are pure and they're holy. I remember one time when I was really, I don't know if any of you have ever done this, when you know that God has a call upon your life and you hear him calling and beckoning to you and you begin to put your running shoes on. You begin to run as far away from God. I don't know if anybody else did it, but you run as far away from God as you can go. And I remember one time, before I married my husband of almost 30 years, we were, I went to a nightclub, and I was just gonna go in because when I got saved, I got saved at 16, and instead of having the freedom of God in me that I was supposed to have, I was told all about what I can't do. I'm 16, I can't do this anyway. I'm living at home. You can't go to a nightclub, you can't drink, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do that. And I got so confused because I didn't understand, basically because when I read the Word, the Word of God told me that I became a new creation. The Word of God told me I had joy unspeakable and full of glory. The Word of God told me I had peace that passes all men's understanding, but now I'm in a state of depression because of what I can't do. So as the years went by, which was about four, so now if you count 16 to four, you know where I'm at, now I'm eligible. So I decide I'm gonna go to a nightclub. I go to a nightclub and while I'm in there and I think I'm getting my groove on, I'm watching people watching me. This is before I met my husband. So I see this man that I took a liking to, none of you have ever done this, but yet he's looking at me with this frown. And I'm like, why is he looking at me like that? It's time for us to dance. So I'm, I'm up there and I'm getting rid of a bowl there. Go ahead and ask the man to dance, some of you know. So he looks at me and he says, what are you doing here? Wow. I said, what? <laughs> he says, what are you doing here? <laughs> Same thing you doing here. <laughs> he said, you don't belong here. Uh -huh. You don't belong in this place. This is not a place for you. And I looked at that man and I finally found my way out that door and I was so confused and in my car and angry with God because he won't let me have fun. He won't let me enjoy the world. He won't let me be free. Now I'm on my own and doing what I wanna do. He won't let me do this. He won't release me. <coughs> for the love of God. Amen. And so when I realized that I couldn't run from God anymore, 
that I begin to say, God, what is it that you're telling me? Though that I try to move into a world of darkness, though I try to hide in my sin, though I try to get as dirty as I possibly can, God still sought me out. God still looked for me. God still found me where I was. God didn't care that I was in the miry clay. God didn't care that I was down and out. God didn't care that I was angry with him. God didn't care that I was caught in tribulations. God didn't care about the parents of my sin. God didn't care about any because for the love of God, he was going to pull me out and make me into what he wanted me to become. And that is what God is doing to each one of us. When you realize that God loved you so much, when you realize that he gave his only begotten son, that you might have life and have it more abundantly, you will understand for the love of God. It doesn't matter what you try to do. It doesn't matter where you try to go. What can separate you from the love of God? I begin to understand before the foundations of this world. You'll probably hear me say this every time I minister. Before the foundation of this world, God knew me. Before I was formed in my mother's womb, he called me out. Before I came out of my mother's womb, he knew what I would become. He didn't care that I tried to run. He didn't care that I tried to leave him. He didn't care that I got angry. It was for the love of God that he brought me to the place that I'm at today. When I think about the goodness of the Lord, when I think about before the foundations of this world, when I think about the, the creation, when I think about God, when he had already put the animals on the earth, he put the fowls in the air, fish in the sea. He put the animal on the land. He caused the trees to come up. The flowers to bloom. And before man came to earth, he said this is good. It is good. But what he did was he said let us go down and let us make ourselves a man. And in that formation God began to form man out of dust. You have heard me say that in the midst of the dirt, God let a mist come up out of the ground to wet the dirt so that he could form that man into what he wanted it to be. He took him and he formed the head. He formed the shoulders. He formed the arms. He formed the chest area. He formed the hips, the legs, the feet. He began to pour inside of him eternal oil. Your kidneys, the liver, the stomach, the heart. He put them all inside. And once he put them inside, he began to put that separation of man from the dirt. Although he made man from dirt, he was able to separate dirt from dirt. Once he made man, and man became flesh, he still laid there on the ground. and his blood vessels and his nerves all begin to form and he began to shake and move and have his being and when he stood up he was all man and man was made a living soul and out of man God said I don't want you to be alone cause Adam realized that he was different from all the other creatures so God put him in a deep sleep and while he put him in the deep sleep he, he performed major surgery on him and out of his rib he took that rib out of the side he pulled the rib out and with that rib he formed a woman and made her to be next to that man and while he formed that woman and that man supposed to be. It was in a miracle. It was amazing. It was awesome what God did. But what I want you to understand, for the love of God, it 
was breathed into Adam. That very breath that I breathe was the life of God going into Adam. And that very breath that went into Adam. If God were to separate himself from me, he would have to take his breath out of me. He would have to remove himself from me. But he cannot remove himself. For we were made out of the image and the likeness of God. And if God decides to separate himself, he would have to separate himself. If I am in the image, if I am in the likeness of God, then I have God inside of me. And if I have God inside of me, then how can he separate himself from me? Jesus said, I am one with the Father. The Father is in me, and I am in him. And just as God and the Father are one, he said, I want you to be one with me. So if God has made me one with him, and I'm breathing the breath of life, if God has made me one with him, and all that I am is the image of him, if God Understand the power that God has put within you, you will understand. 
understand that nothing can separate you yes, from yes, the love of God. Yes. In all that we are, in all that we desire to be, in all that we have become, we need to understand we are totally connected to God. For the love of God has brought us to this place for such a time as this. For a time that we will be able to walk into a new place that you may be revived in your spirit. Some of you, even though the word has gone forth for your healing, the pain remains because you have become comfortable with it. But God says, I am here to heal you from the top of your head. to heal you of every infirmity, of every disease, of every situation, whether it's an affliction in the body or whether it's an affliction in the mind, it doesn't matter what it may be. It could be the depression that he was talking about. It could be trials on your job, trials in your home, trials in your marriage. It doesn't matter what it is. God is saying to you, quit looking at the circumstance. Quit looking at the problem. Quit looking at what you see and begin to focus your eyes on him. Because in that, you cannot see him in the natural. But inside of you, the breath of life has been breathed inside of you. The breath of life has been given to you. The very breath of God is inside of you that connects you to him, that causes you to understand that there is nothing, nothing that can separate you from his love. Yes, yes. Nothing. Nothing. Every single day that you get up, you have to begin to acknowledge. Every single day that you get up, you have to begin to see. You've got to begin to see the image of God. Right. When you look in that mirror, it has to be not you anymore. It cannot be you any longer. It has to be the image of the living God. It has to be the image of the one who created you. When Jesus came down through 42 generations and he came in through the Virgin Mary, when Jesus came down and he was wrapped in human flesh as he grew up as a young boy, sheltered in the home with his mother Mary and his father Joseph, as he was sheltered, he came out at the age of 12 I'm about to close now but he came out at the age of 12 he knew at the age of 12 who he was when he went into the temple and he began to preach the ever loving word of God he began to preach the prophetic word of God and his mother came and got him and she took him back home but before he, she did he told her I am about my father's business he he told her, the thing that I'm doing is what God has called me into. The thing that I'm doing is who I am. You don't know me, my mother Mary. You don't know me, but I respect you. I want you to know that even at my age, I'm talking about Jesus. I want you to know that I am God in the flesh. I'm going to grow up and I'm going to become. Fish is a man. Matthew, when you were a tax collector, I'm going 
gonna make you come and be honest with me. Luke, you are a physician, but I'm gonna let you see true healing and true miracles. And he brought him in, and they became close to him. As they became close to him, they began to understand that they were walking with a true and a living God. They began to understand there's something different about this man. It took them to realize when Jesus went on the cross who he really was. They had walked with him for three years and still didn't understand that they were walking with God in the flesh. What will separate you from the love of God? And so Jesus coming to a close. And so there was Jesus pouring his life into them telling them who he was trying to show them in a subtle way he would pull himself away knowing that many would be upset knowing that many would be angry knowing that some would never receive him knowing that some would reject him and also knowing the plan of God that in order for mankind to be who he was supposed to be he had to give his life for the love of God he had to give his life and yet in the garden of Gethsemane when he knelt down with sweat dropping from his head and sweats of as drops of blood he said God if there be any other way if you have another plan if I can go a different way if I don't have to do this in his flesh he was realizing that he didn't want to die but in the spirit he knew of the connection that he had with God even in that nothing could separate him he knew that he had to do this he had to go to the cross. He knew he had to die for mankind. Many of us die or all of us die and nothing but blackness come. But when Jesus, when he went to that cross, he knew the joy that was set before him. He knew that he would come up out of that grave. He knew that mankind would be saved. He knew that even 2,000 years later, people would still be preaching his name. 2,000 plus years later, they would still be saying, who can separate me from the love of God? Who can separate me from his care? Who can separate me from what he's doing? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus separates us from sin. And I thank God for the blood because Jesus shed his blood that all mankind may have life and have it more abundantly. For the love of God. For the love of God. Who can separate you? Nothing and no one. You have to understand who you are in Christ. You need to understand he's made you for not just the purpose of of being born, existing, and dying. He made you for the purpose of living an abundant life, for the purpose of knowing who you are and whose you are. If you can understand this one thing, that there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God, then you are on your way to your greatness in Him. In Jesus' name.